Hello and welcome to Nautilus Yacht Management. It's the start of a new sailing season in the South Pacific. We are at Muscat Cove in Fiji and we are about to step aboard this stunning Oyster 54 called Oyster Rich. A professional crew on board, you are about to meet Captain Matthew and First Officer Ren who will show you through the board. For any questions, please refer to our website or call Anna on plus 61-420-882. Hi everyone, welcome to Oyster Reach, an Oyster 54, born in 2009. I'm Captain Matthew Reed. And I'm the chef Stu Irene Reed. And we're here on the behalf of Cindy Smith, the owner who is currently in the United States. Together, we're going to show you the features and benefits of this lovely yacht. Alright, we're going to start our tour of Oyster Reach in the cockpit. We'll begin with the engine controls and we'll go to the sail controls and some of the other items in the cockpit for normal yacht operation. To start the engine, very simple on this yacht, simply turn on the run button that starts the fuel pump. Once that noise goes off, we hit start and she's running. You can kick the RPMs up to around 1200 if you're charging batteries or running systems like the Watermaker, Dinghy Davids, or Anchor Wingless. Engine controls are over here. We have RPMs, engine hours, oil temp, and water temp. Oil pressure and water temp. On the console, we have the chart plotter autopilot, dedicated man overboard button, all the exterior lights, a multi readout unit currently on depth, and then we have the bow thruster. Watch, to start the bow thruster you push down on the red button and turn and push the toggle to the left. You'll hear an alarm. And that means the bow thruster is on. There's also a green light on the red button. To turn the bow thruster off, repeat the process, but push the toggle to the right. So I push the red button, toggle to the right, and she's off. Let's move into the cockpit. and show you the furling controls for the head sail. It's a Reckman furler and it's just merely a push of this button out or a push of this button in combined with tailing the Genoa sheet appropriately. For the main sail, come forward a bit and I'll show you those controls. The mainsail furling system is a Selden in-mast electric furling system and we have in on the top and out on the bottom. You control the outhaul with this white line, run on this winch, which is also electric. We also run our, our main sheet here, the vang and the topping lift as well. You never have to leave the cockpit to do any sail controls and or engine controls. That keeps you from exposure either to the elements or danger as opposed to other yachts that aren't set up so 
comfy with everything led to the cockpit. Show you one other feature of this cockpit is the line stowage for the tails of your line go under the cockpit sole and down into a handy bin that also is used for the scuppers for when water comes into the cockpit. One other lovely feature about this yacht is the cockpit cooler for beverages. It holds at least two cases of beer and more than 12 bottles of wine or champagne. Enough for any happy crew. And the table leaves fold out to accommodate easily six people and you could probably cram eight if you wanted to. After this we're going to move forward and show you the anchor windlass. Point the end of Oyster Reach we're going to look at the anchor, anchor chain and windlass. Oyster Reach carries a total of 100 meters of solid chain. Here we have the length readout in the color coding at 10 meter lengths. Right now I'm just at 40 meters of chain and I'm anchored in about 11 meters of water. We've been here for three days and swung in almost 360 degrees, everything working great. Here we have the snubber lines. The primary is this one here. And then I have attached a secondary one to ease the load a little bit, kind of stretch it out. Here are the windless switches. If we want the anchor to go up, we just gently step on this one. We want the windless to go out, we step on the forward one. Very easy. I also do gravity drops using the clutch. I just insert a winch handle, loosen it counterclockwise, anchor goes straight down to the bottom. We watch the color coding on the meters, stop it appropriately, let the boat drift back, use a little reverse, set the anchor, and then let out the appropriate amount of additional chain, attach the snubber, and we're safe and secure. Thank you. Now we're gonna look at launching the tender. First thing we do is put the plug in, and I just lean over the side here. Secure it. Next step, we undo the safety straps. And I like to flick them around. First one. buttons here, port and starboard. That's it. All we do now is unclip the davit lines and the thing is ready to go. All right, welcome to the salon, which has so much features and benefits, I'm not sure if I'll remember them all. Let's start with some of the storage spaces and then we'll move on to some of the other things. Below the settees here on port and starboard, we have 
opening storage. One is general and the other one has a rack for bottles of wine, 12 bottles of wine. Above the settee here on port, we also have glass storage. We have another compartment also for glass storage. And then over on the other side behind this bottle of champagne is another compartment for glass storage. Now I'm going to show you a little something that might catch you off guard. Here, oops, excuse me. Here we have a TV. That hides conveniently behind the settee. Also, under where I'm sitting is a lot of storage for dry goods like offshore foods, pastas, beans, rice, whatever you're stowing. As well as on the starboard settee, a lot more storage, spare parts, even a sail can fit under there. We'll go ahead and lower this down. And hide that away. Under the salon table, we have another compartment. Which houses the washer dryer. This boat is set up for comfort and speed. Next, I'm going to show you the SETI tables. Here we can easily seat six people, but this butterfly design of the table allows me to expand it up to double the size. And there you have it, a giant butterfly table. Okay, let me close this back up. Just outboard here on the starboard side are the aircon controls for the salon. Under this floorboard is the house battery bank as well as the generator start battery and the main engine start battery. Under the companionway floorboards is the generator. We also have located in the companionway an EPIRB. And if you notice and look around, the window shades are all pulled down to keep it cool in here, except for this one forward, because both the port and starboard forward windows open up and let in a lovely, lovely cool breeze that flows aft through the yacht, through the master cabin, keeping her at a nice, comfortable temperature all day long. Next, I'd like to show you the galley. All right, let's take a peek at the chef's galley, which I like to call it here on Oyster Reach. Black Corian counters, beautiful. They look brand new. The aft one as a pot holder for hot pots coming straight off the stove. I've never seen that before. Forward one is our deep freeze. The deep freeze goes down almost all the way to the cabin sole. I don't know how much food you could put in there, but easily a month for four people in the deep freeze alone. Plenty of storage for spices and dry goods, pantry, sliders. We have a dedicated spice and olive oil vinegar area here. It works really, really well when you're at sea. All the main seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic and onion powder, olive oil, etc. 
Here we have a four burner force 10 stove. Works really, really well. We've been cooking up a storm on it. Panasonic microwave to assist. Frigaboat refrigerator, very large. Lots of storage. Here we have more pantry storage. Skillets, pots and pans. Cooking accoutrements. Silverware drawer. More pantry space. Plates, bowls, pots and pans, cups, whatever. And then kind of hidden here in the back center is a dishwasher. So if you really are interested in cushy comfort, you can use the dishwasher. The galley sink has a auxiliary water filter. So it doesn't really matter where your water came from. You go through the auxiliary water filter, it's delicious drinkable water, quite safe, no matter what the source. Here we have uh, lights for offshore sailing. Red light, and then interior lights off, on, plus a fan, keep you cool while you're cooking. Over here we have the trash disposal container, and we, we got a towel storage here for dish towels and other small items. Thank you for checking out the Chef's Galley on Oyster Reach. Now we're going to go over to the nav station, the heart and brain. Welcome to the brain and nerve center of Oyster Reach, the nav station. All our electrics and electronics are controlled from here. Let's begin with the very fundamental basics. Below my feet is the main circuit breaker panel for winches, windlass, uh, davits, etc. All the big breakers. Also the DC panel is controlled from down here with a main breaker. We also have the engine battery, generator battery, and parallel switches here for starting up the main engine or the generator. Next, if you look up behind me, we have the main circuit board with the master bolt monitor here the generator start and stop panel, AC panel, DC panel. We also have some three main breakers for the inverter, AC mains, and shore two power. I'd like to quickly just show you how to start the generator so you can get a feel for that. So what I do first is I reach under here and I turn on engine generator and parallel switches. Turn on the panel for the Onan generator. Once that's alive you press the start button and hold it through the alarm and until the actual generator engine starts. She's up and running. Generator fits well in this yacht. It's quiet, it's soothing, very powerful. You can run every system on the boat concurrently and not have a generator failure. In fact, she likes to be loaded up. So when we're charging the batteries in the evening, we turn on the air conditioners just to give an added load because the batteries aren't really grabbing that much. To continue the process, once the generator's running, turning 
off the inverter quickly here. Once the generator is running, we can go ahead and turn on the battery charger. And I'm just going to go back to the master bolt to quickly see what's happening. Once the charger kicks in, the amps will jump up to around 60, usually after about 12 hours of inactivity. She's loading up now. And she's creeping up on 60, 59, 60. There we are. Next, I'd like to show you the water maker control panel over here. This water maker is dual system, runs off 24 volts or uh, shore power 230 or the generator if you wanted to do 230. I don't want to run it in this water. I'm a little hesitant about pollutants. However, you could just turn it on, dial up the pressure, and off she would go. For communications, we have VHF radio, handheld VHF. We have a satellite phone system, and even an archaic single sideband system, because I think it was the transitory period, 2009, when sat phones were slowly edging out the single sideband. We have alarms over here. We have tank monitor, monitors our fresh water. We have a Raycor monitor for the generator. And we have a C fire, fire extinguisher alarm in case something happens in the engine room. And then down here we have a booster for the AIS so other ships can see us better. Those are the main systems. Of course, we have a stereo system as well. And I'd like to show you quickly just pop the chart table up. Typical chart table, reading glasses, pens, pencils, dividers, plotters, and whatnot. Down here, a typical chart table drawer with headlights, knives, scissors, batteries, etc. Now I'd like to show you just quickly the engine room access. We also have access on the galley side, double doors under the galley sink. Lights are in the engine room. And there's another access, a third access in the master head, which I'll show you later that gives you easy access to the water maker and the aft end of the engine as well as the shaft seal. All easily serviced. All right, let's go on into the master stateroom and see what surprises it holds for us. As you can see, it features a very large bed and underneath both sides of the mattress are storage compartments. As well as at the foot of the bed, we have a very, very large rollout drawer. Just behind me is a desk, very convenient, as well as a fold-up vanity for makeup applications. To my left here, going aft, we have storage cubbies, his and hers on both sides, books, night clothes, and then here we have catch-alls, also for books beverages, and snacks. Behind me in the settee, we have plenty of storage. You just pull out the backs, as well as underneath me. There's a full entertainment system here with a TV and sound system, which are connected, as well as a cooling fan. As you can see, the natural light really brightens up the cabin here. Over on the port side, we have double storage compartments for linens and clothes. I'll pop and open this cubby. 
And then behind the door, we have a hanging locker, full size, with a compartment underneath for additional storage. As well, if I just pull up this carpet here, there's three more compartments where you can store things like shoes, galoshes, foul weather gear, etc. Also over here are the controls for the master stateroom aircon, which works wonderfully. All right. All right, let's take a quick peek at the master head. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. First off, we have a full-length mirror on the door for preparation to go out to dinner, either ashore or aboard. Come on inside. First thing I want to show you is the shower door. Lovely full-size shower door. And a lovely full-size shower. Right here, just outboard of the shower, is a towel warmer. And the controls for that are in the vanity, which I'll show you in a minute. Corian counters, just like the forward head. And then plenty of natural light, as you can see. Underneath the sink, we just have a little bit of storage, typical. The head controls, as well as the sump pump control. And now I'll go ahead and show you the control for the towel warmer in the vanity. Right here is the towel warmer. It has a heat control adjustment knob. And then last, I'd like to show you the rear engine compartment access, which also has uh, easy and convenient access to the water maker components, as well as the shaft seal. All three different parts of this room can be serviced very very easily great elbow room for the engineer aboard the forward cabin a lot of people mistake it for the owner's cabin however it is just a guest cabin come on in super roomy and comfortable there is plenty of stowage for clothes shoes and other items we have uh, cabinets on each side port and starboard that lift up we have a large drawer under the bunk. And underneath that, a fairly large additional stowage space. In addition to, on the port side, a hanging locker, good for foul weather gear, fancy clothes, coolers, almost anything. It's pretty large hanging locker. Also on port side we have the air conditioning controls for this cabin. All air conditioners can be running at the same time off the generator so the whole boat can be nice and cool if you happen to be in a hot sweaty locale. Now I'd like to show you the starboard cabin. All right now I'm going to show you the starboard cabin with over under bunks. Plenty of storage for clothes and personal items as well. This cabin shares the same air conditioner as the forward cabin, as well as a side port and a hatch over and above. All the hatches on the boat have screens to keep out insects or a shade cover to keep out the sun during the day. This cabin features a hanging locker behind the door. We have a desk drawer here. Another locker here, lots of storage under the floorboards as well as un under the lower bunk. Now I'd like to show you the forward head and shower, which has also been confused with the master shower. An interesting feature of this space is that it has its own standalone shower, much like an owner's suite would show. So here we have a standalone shower. So lovely, even tall enough for somebody over six feet. Over here we have the head, sump pump control, and standard electric head controls. Corian counters, plenty of storage in the vanity. 
We have under sink storage as well. And another interesting feature, a towel warmer. And I'm gonna go ahead and close this vanity now so you can see the mirror. All right, that pretty much concludes our walkthrough of Oyster Reach. I hope you enjoyed her. She is a lovely, lovely yacht. Aloha. Thank you.